as well. Mike in Bloomsburg, he wants to talk about the job report. How are you, Michael? Well, actually, it's, it's not the job report. It's the topic that came up on the incineration. Okay. And I uh, wanted to weigh in on one of your news stories. But anyway, <clears throat> listen, I am not a scientist, okay? But I did have a degree in earth and space science education, and I spent 34 years in the electrical power industry. So I, I do know like a, a little bit about you science. You sound like an engineer slash scientist to me. So we'll, we'll take your qualifications. Okay, so... <clears throat> Let's, let, we're talking, you know, when you talk about incinerators, you're talking about the environment, okay? And, and the green people, they want to go, and, and, and I don't mean that in a derogatory means, because green people are good, uh, green energy is good, and there's a, a, certainly a place for it. But the first thing you have to look at with uh, green energy, uh, particularly wind and solar, they do not have the ability to be on constantly here at this time on Earth. Nor do they have, so the, ability, have, to, nor do they have the ability for, to have the energy stored. Right, and that's what I'm going to mention here. If you want to store a hydrocarbon such as coal, uh, oil, gas, it costs one dollar to store a, a unit of energy. If you want to store that same amount of energy with batteries, it costs two hundred dollars to store the same amount that you could uh, store a hydrocarbon for a dollar. So there's a, there's a big disparity there because of the cost of batteries. And again, batteries need lithium. And that's a mining thing that environmentalists are generally against. Now, your news cycle mentioned the drought, okay? The, the water, they've never seen it so low or, or flow so low, whatever. You know, and they're talking about California being in a drought. Well, you know, if you, if you really study science, you'll find out that basically every 20 years, California, certain areas, which basically whole California is a desert except for the, mainly the mountain areas. Even San Francisco and, and, and L.A. are deserts. But in any case... They have a, a, a cycle. Every 20 years, they have a drought. And that drought can last one, two, three, and even up to five years before you get into a, a normal cycle of, of water storage in the mountains due to the snow runoff. But So droughts are a normal thing in California. The main thing that's different now with the droughts is they've changed the environmental laws that have limited the amount of storage in reservoirs. Yes. They have a state-of-the-art system in California that, that has worked for years. It was planned ahead of time, but the environmentalists are protecting, are protecting fish that <laughs> aren't even native to California. Yes. And then finally, the incineration. Listen, incineration. I, I grew up downwind of an incinerator in the Williamsport area. So I know what dirty incinerators are. I know what dirty water is because I grew up in the Susquehanna swimming every day in the summer. Okay? We've had technology changes like you wouldn't believe. Anybody that has a cell phone in their pocket knows technology changes. There's improvements. We can burn trash. We can do it efficiently. And we can uh, capture the toxic metals and, and gases that come out. So we don't have to bury our trash in the water and worry about groundwater pollution. We can burn it and get rid of it efficiently and capture everything that comes out to a very high degree to make them safe. So the people want to battle them. They say they're for science, but in my mind, they're really not educated in the topic enough to be saying we can't have a polluting incinerator. Yes, we can. Look what we're doing with technology. Science is our friend. Well, okay. What and by subsidizing. Go, go, go ahead, ahead, Mike. Finish. But by like we're we're subsidizing electric cars right now, and basically what that does two things: it drives up the cost of the electric car, and it limits innovation. The amount of innovation that these car makers have to do to make them more efficient, so that they don't have to do that because they're getting a high price for them. So, you know, in my mind. A lot of things are backwards when it comes to science and people's opinions. And right now, I'm just trying to talk to your audience to say, educate yourself before you make a decision on whether something is good or bad. And Mike, when you have things like ethanol, which now costs more energy than it than it produces, when you have things like electric cars that have at least a 20% mix of coal being burned at our power plants, you are actually being counterproductive when they try to do these kind of things. The, the problem with the greenies, the, the, the AOCs of the world, they don't look at reality, they look at some dream world that they want to exist. 
And it's you, you can't have an intelligent discussion on that basis. And, and Mike, you brought so much to the table. I I know I appreciate it, and I bet our audience does as well. Thank you, Michael, as always. Thank you. Have a great weekend, my friend. All right. Dave, you are holding. We're going to hear from you in a moment. Uh, but we I, let's take this break so we have time. A couple of quick things. Uh, Bob, I was blessed to talk to a man on Memorial Day that was in the Battle of the Bulge. He's 98 years old, and I was so happy that my son could talk to such a wonderful person. We need to be teaching the youth what we truly stand for, freedom. Amen. Somebody else texts in. Bob, I've been involved in the transportation of toxic waste and solid waste for over 30 years. And what people don't know, and I don't know this to be true, this is a texter, we accept Jersey and New York's garbage in exchange for Pennsylvania to dump our toxic waste in New Jersey and New York State. I would rather take solid waste instead of toxic waste, wouldn't you think? Interesting. Very interesting. All right.